Manchester City want to sign Reese James to succeed Kyle Walker? I bet they do. Real Madrid have also been chasing Reese James for a long time now. Mm, we're going to talk about that today as well as some other stories. Cole Palmer, uh, Raheem Sterling, stories regarding them. Welcome to Football Therapy, welcome to Chelsea News. I hope you're doing well, I really do hope that. Um, yeah! Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, lots to get into today. Thank you for joining me. We are going to talk about how everyone still wants Reese James, Chelsea's captain. Surely this guy, when are people going to get the message? Both Real Madrid and in this instance, Manchester City. He's Chelsea's captain. He's got a long term deal and he <clears throat> loves the club. We are going to get into that story. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, an hour. We're going to reference an article by Steinberg on the Guardian speaking about Cole Palmer because he's a hot topic at the moment. Cole Palmer, he really is. Um, and of course, Chelsea are playing Man City tomorrow, so it's relevant. Guardiola's been speaking about him as well. Like, congratulations! I'm glad he's getting his minutes. Hell yeah, he is. First of all, the BBC writes, the Football Association will take no further action against Raheem Sterling after reviewing the footage of the first Chelsea goal celebration in the match against Tottenham on Monday. Of course, it was alleged that Sterling threw an object into the crowd. Um, the forward is free to face Man City with no ban. Um, yes, yeah, so this was a talking point. It was on Chelsea's own TikTok, Chelsea's own media, where the FA was investigating and looking at the footage. And it was talking about how he could face a ban. Of course, referencing the um, Richarlison flair throw at Everton. He got banned for throwing that into the crowd. But, um, yeah, I mean, we spoke about it here on the channel. I'm pleased there's going to be no action. You know, don't throw things back at the crowd. But also, just don't throw things at footballers, mate. Do you know what I mean? All right, okay, we are going to talk about Palmer and Reese James first. A quick reminder to those of you who haven't, please do uh, consider subscribing if you think you might enjoy the content. Click on the button, hit the bell if you choose to subscribe, and thank you for liking the video, as that does support us content creators. Now, Goal.com, Gil or Jill Clark has wrote about how um, Man City want Reese James. Now, also Miguel Delaney. Uh, is he right for the Independent? He was also apparently reporting on this story as well. Um, before we cite this, Rhys James is probably the best young right back in the world, right? Ashraf Hakimi is really, really attacking, but pff, I don't know. It's uh, I think Rhys James is better personally, and Rhys James is the kind of player you can play and invert into midfield and play him as a centre-back as well. You can play him literally everywhere bearing in mind he used to be a striker as well hence his finishing is so good hence why his finishing is so good he's a decade younger than Kyle Walker he's the man Reese James the only issue is his uh, injuries of course Real Madrid have long been um, looking to well to try and approach Chelsea to sign Reese James uh, of course they're playing Carvajal at right back um, there's like a bit of a bromance bromance between Vinicius Jr and Reese James and you know the Real Madrid fans are an entitled bunch. They believe they can have whatever they want. And to be honest, usually they can, you know? So that's probably why they feel like that. And if you go on Reese's social media, you know, it's always come to Madrid, come to Madrid. They, they want to sign him, you know? Um, and of course, being English is hot topic at the moment. They'll just look at Jude Bellingham uh, and then be like, yeah, well, this works. Let's get another one. Let's get Reese James at right back. He can do loads of damage on that right flank and lock you down. So I get it, but Man City apparently as well. So let's read this article on goal.com now. Premier League champions Man City view Chelsea defender Reese James as a potential successor to veteran right-back Kyle Walker. City are interested in signing James and view the England international as a potential replacement for Walker. According to the Independent, of course, Mikel Delaney writes for them. James, quote, has long been earmarked by City to be as the man to succeed Kyle Walker. And he, his name has cropped up even last summer. Wow. He's just signed a new deal, like, uh, so, so recently. Walker turned 33 in May, but remains a key player for Pep Guardiola's side and signed a contract extension that runs until 2026. Yeah, he's still so good and fast at 33. Reese James is a decade younger. Oh, here we go. James is also thought to have attracted interest from Real Madrid, Carlo Ancelotti report. And it, uh, this predates Carlo Ancelotti. Oh, does it predate Carlo Ancelotti? Maybe not, no. Uh, sees Chelsea start as a potential successor to, the, here we go, the 31-year-old Danny Carvajal. Yet James has never given any indication he wants to leave Chelsea. The 23-year-old came through the academy and was named the new uh, captain in this summer following uh, Cesar as 
P. Laquetta. Mm, mm, mm. Let's talk about this a little bit. Look, man, uh, the t- clubs don't come in for Reese James because they're like, oh, yeah, he's Chelsea. But, but if there's two clubs in world football that think maybe they can, it's probably treble winners Manchester City, who are currently coached by the best gaffer in the world in Pep Guardiola. They're, they're probably think, say to like, Reese, come on, mate, you get to stay in the Prem, we'll pay you more money than Chelsea are paying you. You get to get, be coached by Pep Guardiola and you get to win loads of trophies. Think about it. Think about it. And also Real Madrid's Real Madrid, you know, they, they took Eden Hazard away. Um, you know, they obviously took uh, Rude, um, Rudiger. They'll, you know, th- these kind of clubs are the only ones who maybe think, look, I understand how he's Chelsea and probably doesn't want to leave, but our, you know, respective scenarios should be tempting. And also what maybe will give them... Uh, license to dream, I suppose, is the fact how Chelsea's new ownership aren't totally adverse to selling off academy products as pure profit. Like, Rhys James would, what, set the world record fee for a defender? What is it, Guardiola at the moment? Or is it still Harry Maguire? <laughs> Either way, you'd think Rhys James would be like, if to get away from Chelsea, you'd think Chelsea would have to be paid, like, 100 million plus and that and that would be pure profit on the books which would be like insane amounts of pure profit but let's pump the brakes it's not gonna happen now some people not many but a very few chelsea fans are very frustrated with reese james's um non-availability and availability is the best ability apparently and they'll think oh look we've got malo gusto who's young and dynamic on last wages and always available and you could play him yeah, and you know if chelsea can get a mass and reese james is one of the Two players on big wages. I think it's now just Reese. It, no, it's Kukurea as well, actually. But not as much as Reese James. The two highest earners, I believe, now Lukaku's gone is Raheem Sterling and probably Reese James on this new deal. So, you know, they might be like, oh, we can do, you know, in the way they got rid of Mounts so they didn't have to pay him those high wages because they didn't think he was worth it. You know, maybe they'll, they'll be tempted for Reese James. But the truth is, even if some Chelsea fans want Chelsea to sell Reese James, Come on. He's our captain. He's the best on form, the best right back in the world. And many will tell you, when he's on form, when he plays well, Chelsea's playing well. Absolutely. There's, there's, I, for me personally, this is my opinion. I can't, I can't currently think of a scenario that I would be happy with Chelsea selling Reese James unless he put in a transfer request and said, actually, I hate Chelsea, <laughs> which is never going to happen. Look at the way he celebrates. He like holds up Chelsea shirts to rival fans. He like, you know, always rips the badge off his shirt. He loves Chelsea and he's the captain. And although I'm not completely convinced personally about him as cap- as a captain in terms of qualities off the pitch, um, you can't, You know, this guy loves Chelsea and we're not going to sell him. So Man City and Real Madrid, you can both F off respectively. All right, so we got that out of the way. Let's talk about what um, the Guardian are writing regarding Cole Palmer. Hot topic at the moment. Three goals, five assists in the last five games, I believe. Absolutely. Uh, You know, there's the Athletic of us reporting things like there's an insider at Chelsea um, believes, has anonymously given the... uh, asserted the belief that Cole Palmer is what Chelsea thought they were getting with Kai Havertz. Um, you've got Pep Guardiola actually saying he thinks Cole Palmer is more like, because he, he was asked if he's a bit like Juan Mata, and he was like, no, no, he's more like Angel Di, Ma- Angel Di Maria. Angel. Probably shouldn't try and pronounce it like that. Angel Di Maria, mate, that he, in terms of profile and movement and style, that Cole Palmer is more like him. But let's dive into this article from uh, Jacob Steinberg and see what he's saying. Club Clubs with a coherent recruitment process do not really do regrets. It's why Man City are unlikely to be caught fretting about selling Cole Palmer to Chelsea in the summer. Outsiders may view it as a risk, particularly as Palmer is in excellent form before facing his boyhood club on Sunday afternoon. But City are hardly short of attacking talent and conduct their transfer business in a way that means they do not have to second guess themselves about letting players go. Yeah, this is true. 
Still, Chelsea are entitled to argue that they have got a bargain when they sign Cole Palmer for £40 million. Sometimes everyone leaves a negotiation feeling triumphant. In this case, City bolstered their financial fair, fair play, of course, selling a homegrown player, pure profit, uh, who's on the fringes of the team. Chelsea paid relatively little for a top young talent, and Palmer joined a club who, for all uh, their instability, were ready to offer him regular football. Of course, like I said, Guardiola has already been like, he wanted regular game time. He's got it. Nobody has to feel bitter. To be honest, like, I've said this before. I think all the business we've done with City is good. I think Raheem Sterling at £47 million of all the Premier League titles and the age profile he was and the injury record he had was really, really good uh, for both teams because he had 12 months left, but Chelsea were getting that player. £47 million really isn't that much for Raheem Sterling. And then you know, £30 million for, you know... Um, Kovacic, who was a year older than Sterling, also had a year left on this deal and wasn't a goal-scoring midfielder, so 30 million's pretty sweet, you know? Um, so, uh, know, Palmer hoped this would be his break for, uh, breakthrough season at City, of course, um, especially after the Riyad Mahrez moved to Saudi Arabia. And there were positive signs at the start of the campaign. He scored that mega super goal in, against Arsenal in the Community Shield, and he headed in City's equaliser in Sevilla. So he started this season really informed before the window shut. Um, but was Palmer about to follow in the footsteps of Man City's other academy star, Phil Foden, and force his way into the plans? Uh, Foden is an established is established with City and England, but Guardiola clearly liked Palmer and gave him opportunities last season. He didn't give him that many opportunities. Of course, uh, they've got, in terms of attacking midfielders and attacking talent, De Bruyne, Grealish, Alvarez, Bernardo Silva, and Foden... Uh, and then, of course, when they signed Mateus Nunes and Jeremy Doku, that's probably why um, Cole Palmer left. It made no sense for Palmer to stay and fight for his place. He played a key role for England, winning the U21 Championship, of course, in the summer. And uh, he could not afford to be sidelined. Other avenues were explored. City had rejected Brighton's £35 million for, Bar for Palmer. And there was interest from Burnley and West Ham. So these, like, you know, Burnley and West Ham, he's not going to go. Brighton, maybe, because they're on the up and they're exciting and, you know, it's a good platform to go. So when Chelsea came along, he must have been really, really excited, of course. Um, Joe Shields knows him um, from the Man City Academy days. He's now working for Chelsea. Um, yeah, incredible, really. Um, so Chelsea spent some time monitoring the situation after we didn't sign Michael Elise in the summer. Yet the move itself was op opportunistic. Chelsea was short on an attack. Of course, we lost um, Christopher Nkunku and Carney Chocomoka to injury. Pochettino called for reinforcements. Chelsea, notoriously blunt in the final third, needed help. However, eyebrows were raised when Palmer added to the squad. Of course, because it's, you know, 40 million quid. At the time, you were like, yeah, I understand why he cost 40 million quid, but is this the best way we should be spending 40 million quid? That was the question. If you remember me, ladies and gentlemen, I was very, very excited we signed Cole Palmer because I knew what this kid is, basically. And I didn't think he'd necessarily start as well as he has, but yeah, I was very, very excited, of course. Yeah. Um, it seemed Chelsea would sign a right side of the attacker. Of course, we've got Sterling, Madweke, Mudrik. Um, now we can play someone on the right-hand side with a left foot that can play more as a number 10. Of course, Nani Madweke is more of a winger. Um, it goes on to talk about you know how we reflect on this um, transfer as a really, really good piece of business, but also as an upgrade on Mason Mount, Kai Havertz. Mason Mount's maybe a little bit unfair because he's more of like a conventional number eight. And Cole Palmer really is like a number 10. Chelsea thought they were going to get this like maybe number 10 with Kai Havertz. He couldn't play a number 10. We played him as a right, uh, a right winger. We played him as a striker, like a false nine, a true nine. We played him as a attacking number eight, like he's kind of doing sometimes at Arsenal. This is not a hit piece on Kai Havertz. I think he's very talented. I think he's like wonderfully unique, but I also wonder if he's a man out of time, if he just doesn't fit in with the modern landscape of top level football. I think he suits well international football. I think he play well for Germany. I think um, in the Champions League, sometimes he can do well, but ugh, I struggle to see him really making a dent in that Arteta Arsenal side. He's got one goal so far and that was a pity penalty. You know, Mason Mount is a, is a great player, systemic player. Um, I think both of them will regret their moves, apart from being paid massive amounts of money on fresh five-year deals at you know United and Arsenal, respectively. So they'll be happy with that. But um, 
Yeah, man. Like, it's... Uh, in terms of Cole Palmer, he'll be on significantly less money than uh, what Kai Havertz was and, you know, possibly slightly more than what Mason Mount was on. But Mason Mount was on, like, promoted championship player from 2019 contract, which is wild, really. He, he under-earned so much at Chelsea, Mason Mount. People forget that. He delivered us, like, Champions League glory, but was getting paid, like, 60k a week when, you know, some players were getting paid 300k a week and doing nothing. Cole Palmer, though, he does look like he fits the fits the bill completely. He's a left footer that can really comfortable on the right wing, but he's so, so comfortable as a number 10. He knows how to drop in where. He knows how to block passing lanes. He knows exactly where to pass the ball. And it's mad, really, because, what well, he's 21 years old, and we're waiting for the rest of our team to catch up with him, like older players to catch up with him in terms of knowing where they need to be to, to receive what are his correct passes in terms of, you know, what should be done at the time. Incredible, really. Rightly, there's a lot of media about him. The Guardian writing about him here that we're speaking about. Of course, Pep Guardiola speaking about him as well. Um, you know, he's the hot topic and he's an incredible player and I'm very pleased we have him. Let me know what you think about the stuff we spoke about today. You don't have to comment on Raheem Sterling, because that's just good news. He's not going to get banned. But please do let me know your thoughts on Reese James. Do you think he'll forever be with us? Will his injury woes uh, lessen? And will Man City and Real Madrid ever go away? And feel free to also comment on Cole Palmer. Uh, yeah, man. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Um, of course, keep it locked to Football Therapy for after the City game. I will do a complete breakdown uh, series video on that game. Hopefully, it's not a bloodbath in terms of us losing. Uh, yeah, and that's it from me. Peace.